नमस्कार एवरीवन एंड अ वेरी वेरी वार्म वेलकम द सैटरडे एंड आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर कीपिंग इन अ गुड हेल्थ एंड टेकिंग टेकिंग अ गुड केयर ऑफ योरसेल्फ यू नो इट्स प्रीटी सनी आउट हियर इन बैंगलोर इट वाज रेनिंग लाइक कैट्स एंड डॉग लास्ट इवनिंग एंड बट या इट्स कंप्लीटली ड्राइड अप अ ग्रेट वेदर आई एम लुकिंग एक्सट्रीमली एक्सट्रीमली प्रेजेंट एंड वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट आईपीएल यू नो द ब्रांड्स Uh, look aggressively for IPL every year, and um, and you know the consumer brands keep a major chunk of their marketing monies to launch and and relaunch brands at this part of time, and this is also the time when the creative folks uh, uh, work overtime, and um, you know to me personally, um, uh, you know few advertising creatives during the current IPL has left me completely. and and uh, and i don't mind saying them that few of them i really find them silly and stupid uh, you could put a donkey uh, in an ad or hire celebrities and mock them and uh, ridicule them or or famous cricketers get pushed around and or you even tell a cricketer on his face that they will say anything for for money you know i mean uh, i wonder what's really happening to the advertising and and creativity uh, well this is not the context of the discussion today but i thought of um, of sharing a notion on on what for someone like uh, me who is not really from a creative industry uh, feels when i uh, look at a creator you know and i and i really wonder why do the celebrities uh, agree to be mocked uh, um, uh, and and does mocking a celebrity enhance the brand equity uh, overall you know for for a layman uh like me you know expression uh and and emotion is is what needs to come out of a creative or 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 any advertisement um uh, i work in a media space and i can say confidently that that many companies tend to look at the design and a creative from a very uh narrow perspective and as as they are not able to draw a line between a marketing uh, and branding and a and a short term business outcomes uh, becomes more and more um, important you know but then you know you have examples like uh, like lego on on how design and creativity uh, help them to achieve its business goals and and overall strategy and in fact pull them out of the financial cliff and bankruptcy at uh, uh, at one point of time you know um you know in a pre uh, uh, digital days advertising creators uh, used to set the entire cultural uh, agenda and and captivity of the public you know and uh, and nearly every piece of that equation has uh, uh, probably changed now and uh, agencies are better informed than ever about their customers uh, it is now the data and the consumers that is actually leading the creative uh, strategy and you're not really defining or building a culture you know uh, but you know i i actually feel that advertising industry uh, has a problem today and and people hate ads in fact they are paying monies uh, to avoid seeing the ads you know and uh, uh, on on one side where the google and the facebook has reshaped the ad delivery netflix has added the further stroke uh, on on giving the ad free entertainment all over you know so um, are these the dangerous days for creativity you know uh, i don't have the facts but uh, uh, but you know it's it's i've heard that the media houses have started rewarding or compensating consumers for for looking at the ads uh, but uh, i am not sure about that so um, advertising seems to be becoming a very complex and a and a very sprawling uh, marketplace uh, overall you know and i've spent over over two decades in the media industry and learned some nuances and marketing is just not about logos or articles or designs or sales it is actually the full story and the entire essence of the uh, of i would mean, say brand and how you portray it it is it means a uh, driving awareness sales followers community uh, and much more you know and um to me personally um a couple of brands have really touched my heart in the way they have uh, done it one is uh, one is apple you know and how they've created a a lifestyle brand you know and and they've created a you know sport called creative in the subconscious mind of uh, of consumers you know and uh, no one will claim that you will become a creative by using an apple product but you belong to a 
uh, a creative class uh, that's what the apple has kind of portrayed in terms of its culture you know uh, it doesn't talk about if its products like the way the other do it uh, uh, like what i mean to say a functional brand but it talks about a lifestyle brand uh, in general uh, another could be harley davidson i mean uh, there is uh, it, it really portrays a very feel loving no nonsense tattoo customers uh, uh, if you look around and there are brands which which i feel very sorry about like mercedes benz you know and uh, you know at one point of time it used to be called a more safe luxury precision engineering of the car uh, that you can think about and the competition forced them to change and they today they talk about lifestyle they talk about that you know listen we are a lifestyle brand and they started competing with every other brand in the uh, uh, in the in the segment you know Uh, well, uh, these are just few of my thoughts, but uh, we have an outstanding panel of uh, of creative leaders to talk about all this today. You know, and I'm I'm keenly looking forward to listening to today's conversation. You know, and uh, all of them are benchmarks uh, when it comes to creative lessons. And uh, uh, let's let's hear them out on some creative stories, uh, uh, case studies. Uh, that will enlighten all of us in our brand building uh, journey so join me to welcome all our panelists and allow me to do a very brief introduction of uh, each one of them please so we have gunjan arya um, a ceo of oml uh, gunjan joins us from dubai and uh, gunjan has been in a business of building brands uh, uh, since the age of 16 and uh, she has formerly worked with various uh, global and indian ad agencies and she is also an entrepreneur at heart and have launched her own company in 2009 called design of information and now a part of oml since 2015 she's been instrumental in helping the company transform itself into a home grown indian company to a global company and setting up one of its fastest growing verticals the global uh, creator network that has presence in about 22 uh, countries uh, welcome gunjan Uh, and yeah mahesh uh, shah uh, he is general manager and head public relation hdfc limited um, mahesh uh, uh, joined hdfc in 1986 uh, and has managed uh, internal and external brand communications advertising including media planning buying direct marketing events and market research for india as well as overseas operation of hdfc for the first two decades of his career and now he also focuses uh, on the media relations He has um, he has seen every creative change that HDFC has gone through over the last uh, three decades, and I'm glad that he has joined the panel today as uh, he would be able to provide a perspective on creatives as a consumer of creatives. So that would be very interesting. So welcome, Mahesh. Um, then we have Pooja Juhari, uh, CEO of the Glitch, and uh, Pooja is an adventurous professional in advertising and marketing. Uh, with past stints in Unilever and Times of India, her latest has been to build a glitch uh, over the last ten years. And as past uh, part of her roles as CEO, Pooja has spearheaded uh, Glitch Vision to work with ambitious businesses like uh, Netflix, Unilever, LinkedIn, Biogeo, to just name a few. Uh, welcome, Pooja. Uh, then we have uh, a famous Raji Raja, the founder and soundsmith, uh, Brand Music. Uh, Raji is a celebrated uh, uh, creative director and is one of the India's finest uh, jazz and fusion flautist. You know, and his company, uh, Brand Music, brings the science of brands uh, and the art of music together, creating tremendous uh, value for clients. And Raji has a special show for us towards the end of this uh, uh, conversation. And uh, 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 Ravinder Sivaj, uh, a national creative director for Havas Group uh, India, uh, Ravi has a rich uh, creative background, working on a cross section of brands and categories. Uh, he's a strategic thinker and a great understanding of evolving uh, media landscape. He has over two decades of experience across agencies, and he's worked on brands like Coke, Nestle, Nokia. And to moderate the conversation, uh, we have Shivaji Das. Uh, founder in MD in Extro Brand Advisory. Uh, I won't hesitate uh, in calling him the Shashi Tharoor of the advertising world. Uh, uh, I usually need a dictionary handy uh, to keep a pace of his outstanding vocabulary and usage of uh, of words. And uh, he's a man who's born to think uh, creatively, whether through its writing or and strategic thinking. And uh, he's been a part of our leadership teams at Contract and Havas, and now he runs his own Inexpo. Uh, and, and his belief is that integrity, expression, and growth must work in a thoughtful tandem, 
sustainable uh, brands, you know. So friends, uh, a very warm welcome again. And uh, uh, it's, it's going to be a very free flowing conversation. Uh, Shivaji says, uh, uh, over a mall, uh, I, I say over anything, you know, and, uh, uh, and I, I'll probably return towards the end of the conversation to know on uh, what all my friends are doing other than working on the creative uh, mandates of their customers, what's creativity happening in their life. And uh, till then, Shivaji, the screen is uh, all yours. And uh, a very warm welcome again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deepak, uh, for those kind and uh, you know, kind of exceptional words. And I think, uh, as we discussed yesterday, the only ball that is valid at this time is Bon Vita. So I think we'll refrain from that. But uh, you know, good morning. And I think it's uh, it's it's a very ripe time to discuss the you know, great subject of creativity because there are these two other uh, uh, players in the cast, if I may say so, which is data and technology, uh, which is actually forming this brand new creative troika. So it is creativity, data, and technology, which is really kind of, you know, working in tandem to uh, provide solutions to clients and to businesses. And uh, the way we thought we will take this very freewheeling discussion is that we'll first request, uh, I will request each panelist to you know, share their larger worldview and, you know, opinion uh, on this matter of this whole merger of uh, creativity, data, and technology uh, as expressed in uh, their businesses, as expressed with the kind of client and uh, <laughs> you know, career, source interactions that happen. But I would like to start with actually uh, just laying a few of my uh, very basic thoughts on the table to say that uh, in my recent experiences and opinion, I think it's very critical to ensure that you know this obsession for data or the obsession for technology, which is driving us right now, does not take away the core essence of creativity or the core essence of this little differentiated, inspirational, provocative secret sauce uh, that pretty much defines the success of an Apple, a Lego, or the humongous creative uh, campaigns that have been done mm -hmm. over the years. And how does one, uh, as consumers, as creators, as users, marry this in a very uh, successful fashion? I think that's one thing, that's a challenge that we're all uh, in our own ways facing. Uh, the second uh, story that really comes from, uh, uh, again, the last 10 years is, is again, to borrow from an old uh, a saying about strategy, that strategy is too important to be left to the strategy department. Uh, similarly, creativity is also way too important to be left to just the creative department or the creative agencies. So I think today this whole um, aspect of right brain and aspect of right and left coming together at a fundamental product and service development stage uh, is really the story for startups, the story for tech-enabled businesses in whichever sphere one is talking about. And how does how does creativity actually gallop up the value chain? Not because it's a due or it's a it's a right, but it's a necessity in terms of providing differentiated value for the stakeholders, the shareholders, uh, and so on. Uh, and I think right now it's very interesting because you know we are in a stage where uh, data is under the scanner more than ever before in India, right? With the with the TRP scandal, with you know the whole idea of how data can be manipulated uh, depending on uh, what the ambitions are. But, but fundamentally, the consumer's mind cannot be manipulated beyond a point because that's where I think we need to all uh, bring together intuition and uh, uh, kind of you know analysis to get the right sources of uh, creativity put together. So I'll be actually putting together you know a few of these uh, starters going forward, taking from all your conversations. But I would actually now request. Uh, uh, the panelists, starting with Guljan, uh, purely following the Deepak sequence of introduction, uh, to share, you know, in a, in a business uh, where talent is your stock and trade, uh, how does this marriage happen and what are your worldviews, what is your worldview uh, in this matter? Thanks, Shivaji. Uh, thanks, and hi, everyone. Morning. Thank you for joining us on a weekend morning. Um, it, I know I barely got out of bed in time for this uh, conversation, but really happy to be here. Um, so honestly, it's it's important to really study the media landscape because that's what really allows to get a message through. If we look back to the days when um, CPG advertising was at its um, at its peak, and this I know a bunch of uh, the panelists here have worked on Unilever. I've worked on PNG in the past in my advertising days. Back then, the the way to get shelf space in retail stores was to put a TV ad up. 
and because tv media was the most expensive it was an opportunity for those brands to flex muscle and say hey this is the kind of money i'm putting behind my product so if you start stocking my products i know those will those will move and that became a shortcut to understanding the kind of brand value uh, these brands came with and creativity there was a way to get attention because the media landscape was predominantly tv radio it was broadcast media if we look at what's happening today with digital everyone has an opportunity to be a broadcaster and i feel like i'm just repeating everything that people are saying but when you put uh, broadcasting or narrow casting in the hands of everyone and all of us have the opportunity to put our messages out then everyone is marrying creative plus data so the data that only media planners had access to today all of us have access to our instagram backend all of us have access to what our youtube data is telling us in terms of who's reaching who's seeing what ads who's seeing what communication and that also allows us to tailor our messaging a lot more specifically so that's happening on the the creative makers ends and whether that's talent or whether that's brands everybody is a publisher and on the end of the audience what's happening is that all of us have become audiences of one we're not necessarily hey you know uh prime time television is watched by this sec and this age group etc cetera, etc cetera. It, all of us are very consciously choosing what shows up on our timelines which is why it's becoming more than ever necessary to have a very unique creative angle that allows you to break through and get more people to listen in so which is why creativity almost becomes like you finding your tribe uh, so while data and tech have become more important and they've sort of shortened the funnel in terms of being able to reach the end customer creativity remains that inherent human effort that makes each communication message so special and which is why every i op, i honestly think every instagram post is an opportunity and uh, it has the opportunity to reach a lot more people than it's probably already reaching and that's on the back of creativity so that's fantastic so i think the 15 seconds of fame is now the 1.5 second of fame we all <laughs> we all need to capitalize on and you know make the most of in this whole journey and present a unique voice um, and at this point i would actually like to request mahesh shah uh, who's had amazing experience in bringing uh, hdfc which is such a fantastic brand come to life over the last decade or more to tell from your perspective as a customer and a provocator of creative uh, content what's your view on what's happening yeah thank you shivaji and uh, thank you deepak for that introduction because it was very important to uh, communicate that i am not a creator or a creative person but a, consum a consumer of creative having said that what i have noticed in the last 3 3 and a half decades that i have been watching it very closely today the, the creativity is more focused on content um, on video content i remember uh, two day decades ago video was not i mean video was um, a luxury in that sense and uh, the only way to communicate through video was television and it was not easy to afford those days especially for the young company so and the financial uh, products always preferred and i i been always with the financial company financial services company we always preferred print now what what i what i see in the last decade is is the other way around you know the 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 speed at which videos get created the data available the analytics available make it so uh, you know sometimes uh, we people who are basically consumers get awed by by the video creativity because it has that sound voice and all those things so we have actually moved from a very dry cut direct ads to basically a uh, a uh, a video which is always uh, interactive and all those things so that's the major change that i have seen yeah so i think that that's very interesting you know what's happening is that the same customer has to be reached and has to be inspired and provoked but uh, i think we are finding far more uh, interesting far more effective and uh, you know new age ways of doing it and that's something we'll keep coming back to uh, going forward uh pooja over to you i think you're right at the forefront of this uh, digital evolution uh, that's the core business that you're in and uh, 
while you are doing campaigns for clients and also sure that you are mentoring clients to uh, kind of progress on this journey towards new age branding. So I would love to hear from you on this. Thank you guys. And it's, it's good to be here. Um, for me, this is the best time to be a brand. It's the best time to be a marketer and it's, a, it's the best time to be a creator. Um, and for me, data and technology and creativity are allies of each other. When, and if we use them well, we can have breakthrough, um, create breakthrough brand love and relevance. And uh, you know all of the marketing matrix that every brand manager has. It's the best time for creativity today. And I say that because you know, it's no longer just about that beautiful film that someone would write and would go on TV, right? It's no longer about that. Today, a tweet is great creativity and can just immediately push what you think about a brand, the sentiment about a brand. An app notification can and can do that. Uh, one Instagram post, like Gunjan said, can do that. But the importance of it and the core job that people like us have is to string it all together so that it is... We're speaking the same, you know, a brand stands for something, but their social profile and their digital profile is different. It's almost like how you're with your friends and how you're in a meeting, right? The, your fabric of what you believe in doesn't move away, but you, you interact in a completely different way. And today it's no longer about a monologue, it's about a dialogue. And if a brand can incite that, that's when you have won. And um, that's what data allows you to do. Even the biggest brands like Apple and Lego, some of the examples that you guys made, it, it's data and listening is central to what they do. Um, right from the beginning, why does Apple operate in the world of creativity? Because when they launched, that was the, that was the biggest gap that was available. All of the technology products were targeted only to professionals. And they have really built that over the years by being culturally very, very sound, by being extremely authentic and never losing, uh, you know, what they started off doing. So if you look at, you know, even, even brands like Netflix, the ones that we handle, uh, constantly listening to what consumers are saying using that data to power a creative director's mind and building out strong creative strategies. That's the biggest superpower we have today. And if we use it well, um, you, you can win every day. And, and that's the power. And we've democratized it. And it's fantastic. You know, what I get is this, uh, at the word you entered with democratize. I think that's the critical part of this whole journey. It's for everyone. It's inclusive, exclusive. Uh, and the second word I picked on is dialogue. And I'll come back to dialogue later because, you know, I think historically the relationship between communication and the communicated uh, has had its own power distance. And now that's been busted uh, big time in this, uh, this regime, as it were. Uh, so over to Rajiv, uh, who's pretty much been a pioneer in Sonic Branding. And actually, you've actually uh, made uh, uh, one more critical sense come to life, if I may say so, in this uh, larger conversation of brands and making it all work together. MasterCard is a staggering example of you know how this is uh, now something you've done for a global brand out of India. Uh, would love to hear from you your journey in terms of uh, uh, focusing on Sonic and how this has uh, opened up newer dimensions in this conversation. Okay, great. So um, instead of uh, talking too much about it, Fantastic. let me demonstrate it. Yeah? Fantastic. So uh, I'm going to play a short piece on my flute. And uh, I want all of you all to just close your eyes. And uh, at the end of it, uh, we'll have a chat about what you'll probably see some imagery. You may feel some emotions. It may trigger some memories. We'll have a chat about what you saw and felt. Yeah? OK. So eyes closed.
can open your eyes. Okay, one word from each of y'all uh, of any imagery you saw or any emotions you felt. There's no right or wrong answer. Uh, childhood. Okay. For me, it was my my the garden in my mind just felt beautiful. Okay, great. <laughs> I was thinking nostalgia as well, so close to Ravi. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite soothing. Actually. Soothing, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll stick to nostalgia. I think it just brought okay. back a whole host of memories. <laughs> Deepak, you're on mute. Deepak? You know, one of those, I, I found a little scenic in one of the rural areas, somebody walking yeah. and doing something around there. Yeah, so that's where I guess. So, you know, th th this was just to demonstrate the power of sound. And this is what we are exploring uh, in our company, which is how music fundamentally and sound can affect human emotions and evoke different kinds of emotions, right? Now, this particular piece that I played, I played all over the world you know, and to brands and clients all over the world. And you won't believe it, whether it's Indian or Western or, you know, Asian, everybody gets similar kind of feeling. And that hap that's happens by design and not by accident. Because this particular rag or scale that I used is a rag called Hamsadwani, very famous South Indian rag. And just getting a little technical, it uses only five notes in the scale. So it only uses... Right? And that's why it, it has such a beautiful, mellifluous sound. So, uh, sound can really, you know, change uh, human emotions. And our journey began by understanding the science of sound. Uh, we know that Indian rags, there are morning rags, afternoon rags, evening rags. If you listen to Vivaldi's Four Seasons, and if you listen to spring, you will see spring. You don't need visual imagery along with it, right? So we said, how can brands utilize this amazing power of sound by uh, uh, matching the DNA of brands, the personality and the values of a brand to correlated sonic fields that evoke those emotional essences of brand. Uh, you know, we were able to create a sort of scientific yet artistic kind of way of approaching uh, creating the sound of a brand. And it's it's been it's been an amazing journey. It's been an amazing journey. It's about eight years, but yeah, I so, remember Rajiv telling me about this and me saying, "Wow, I mean, <laughs> it's time yet." So very happy. Yeah. To get, yeah. yeah, we were working together in Mudra at that time. But uh, just to touch upon your question of you know the convergence of technology and uh, you know consumers and sound, it's it's fascinating the things that are happening now. So brands are moving beyond just creating the ting ding 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 right uh, which is which is what we call a mogo or musical logo but uh, it's much more than that so it's an entire sonic identity system just as you have a visual identity system but it's also about creating sonic experiences today you know so sonic is no longer becoming an also ran and as a support to the visual it's standing on its own because of what are called the invisible or screenless mediums like voice activated speakers, Alexa, all of that, you know, coming to the fore and uh, podcasts and streaming, you know, playlists and all of that. So it's, it's a very exciting time uh, to be here and use this creativity for sonic solutions, creating sonic IPs, sonic experiences for brands, understanding their marketing problems and sort of customizing and uh, tailoring sound solutions as it were for them. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what sound, we do at Brand Music. Yes, <laughs> sound solutions is an excellent way of you know putting it. And I think also not just sound, but also you know I think uh, this fact that it's uh, I, the way I see it, it's very uh, intrusively not intrusive because it's with you all the time. Yeah. But you know you don't mind it at any point of time because it's always you know adding a dimension to whatever you're doing. You're driving, you're listening, you're working, you're whatever, and that's I think the entire beauty of uh, you know the the genre and the work that uh, you're creating. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. And I think uh, I will now ask uh, Ravinder. Yeah. Uh, it's nice that uh, Ravinder and I worked closely in the recent past in Havas and uh, yeah. he's worked on some of the most uh, you know, intuitive and let me say customer centric campaigns of the recent point in time. And uh, I would like to ask him, you know, new age branding versus 
timeless branding for yeah. HOT. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, as uh, somebody who's standing in the witness box, as the pure play creative agency, creativity is dead. I want to address that first. I'm <laughs> audible. And Deepak sort of said that, you know, TV advertising, I'm not here. But I want to speak about where is creativity at today, okay? If you all remember, 22nd November, uh, Elon Musk broke the uh, window of the uh, truck that he was launching. What do you think that was? Here is a guy who can send uh, you know, uh, rockets and bring them back to Earth and the glass of that window, I mean, breaks. What was that really? It was marketing. I mean, you may not even have realized it. Next morning, at uh, by 10 o'clock or something, 1,47,000 trucks were booked. Because what it did was it made people more curious than an advertising message would. And that's where creativity is today. It's not in the TV. It has shifted houses. It lives in many houses today. So, so when we say uh, TV advertising is dead, it is just craft is probably suffering because uh, traditional media is expensive. So marketers have to choose. And now they have so many places to be. Like uh, Gunjan said, like Pooja said, you have to be on Insta, you have to be on Facebook, you have to be on YouTube, you have to have an event. So wherever you're spending the most money, you're going to get a little formal like. That is not the end of the I mean, creativity. Creativity is thriving elsewhere. And I must say that creativity will always be, uh, uh, you'll see the brightest sparks at the frontiers, which is what this Elon Musk example is, okay? Speaking of data, I mean, uh, uh, about 20 years back or 30 years back, we would say FD Roosevelt and Hitler, uh, SEC, a male 45 to 55 upmarket guy, but they are very different people. And today, like Pooja said and Gunjan said, what we can do is we will also know what time Hitler wakes up, what does he like to read in, in on his morning uh, post on Instagram, and we create tailor-made content for Hitler separately and Roosevelt separately. That's the power of data. Yeah, so all is well. It's, it's just creativity going elsewhere and doing newer things. It's solving newer problems, right? Rather than just, I mean, it's solving world's problems, actually. There, there are enough and more examples uh, of that. I mean, all of us saw Fearless Girl a couple of years back, which made a huge, huge statement about uh, woman empowerment, right? And what was it? It was not a, a script. It was nothing. It was a statue. It was not even created by the agency. So, so uh, all I'm saying is creativity is very much there and it's very much going to be here in shapes and forms that will constantly continue to surprise us. So Shivaji, that, those are my opening thoughts. No, I think I totally agree. And that's really, uh, I think it's the whole uh, uh, recalibration of creativity from the advertising or static content or mm -hmm. any content to more engaging things. And the first conversation I would actually like uh, everyone to come to the table on today is this uh, relatively new, but relatively cliche jargon called experience. You know, we're actually entering the world. We have entered the world of brand experiences, the entire uh, social cultural mechanisms, entire marketing creative mechanisms are, are designed towards creating experiences, which Ravinder uh, just spoke about. And I think every accomplished panelist here in their own ways uh, are actually fooling experiences. Raji, be it in terms of sound, Mahesh in terms of the banking experience, uh, Gunjan, the work we do with talent, Puja, of course, in terms of you know conversations and uh, culture creation that uh, you know uh, each of you are doing. So I just want to understand from you and just make it very freewheeling in terms of uh, what really is your uh, worldview of experience? Is it a cliche? Is it jargon? And how does uh, the brand narrative change from? Uh, product plus communication towards an integrated experience. Open to all. Now, if, if I could go first, brand experience is, is really number one um, for every brand today. Because if you don't have that in place, you're not going to be able to deliver um, anything beyond great communication. Because uh, you may have a great ad, but if just your customer experience sucks, that's it. You lost the customer. It doesn't matter how smart your creative idea is. So that's number one. It's very, very important. And it's important for every brand manager, along with all of the creative creative data, media, technology partners they work with, that it all strings together, that we are all speaking the same language. The experience that is promised in communication actually gets delivered on ground. And that is not just something that you would get in store, but uh, you know, on app, what you would get in the form of delivery, what you would get in the form of actual product usage. So that piece has to be extremely consistent. And data today allows you to see where you're faltering and be able to make corrections very, very quickly. Because if you may have a great ad, but immediately the moment it is on app for sale, say for example, on an Amazon store, and someone points out to you that this 
did not work for me, you have the power to change it very, very quickly. Then wait for six months till you actually got information and then make a change, etc. Right. So that's very, very important. And the marriage of data plus constant listening is helping make brands lives easier in my view. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, anybody else would like to uh, add to this? Yeah, so if I may go, uh, you know, we touched upon, uh, I think earlier in the introductory statements, uh, something about consumers getting bored of advertising, right? Uh, and uh, I think uh, what's happening is that there's two things that are happening. One is uh, the, the sheer intrusion of when you're on, you know, a digital interspace, inter interface and, uh, you know, an ad pops in and, you know, you're watching something else. Uh, the second is, uh, I think over time, the past decade has not been particularly good for brands in the sense of a certain uh, equity, uh, honesty quotient. You know, a lot of brands have let their consumers down. Uh, whether it's through product failures or corruption or you know various other things so this this notion of brand loyalty right i, I don't think no, any it exists so consumers are saying hey man i don't believe you intrinsically you know you're 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 trying to sell something to me so i think that's where experience really starts playing a role because brands in especially in these times right it's even more important that brands behave honestly, sincerely. And, you know, everything is not about selling. So you've got to, you know, to change your tone to, uh, I read a fascinating article that the sound of birds in, in New York City, the birds are singing differently, right? Because there is so much silence, the birds no longer need to shout louder to get their bird calls heard. Mm -hmm. So they're much more mellow and sweet. So I think brands have to follow that example. And that links into how they create experiences. Experiences, therefore, have got to be much more honest, much more sincere, more subtle, not so branded, right? And we are finding that that's great for the nascent category that Sonic was. It's, it's really catapulting Sonic into uh, the subliminal, uh, you know, experiential Kind, kind of space. So I think really the experience is the word. So we've actually started a new division called Brand Music XP, which is, of course, stands for experiential. Right. Yeah. Well, I actually want to ask uh, Mahesh this uh, one question. Yeah. Fantastic, Raji, for this to say that there's a whole school of thinking, right? That uh, branding is no longer about promise, it's about delivery. And the entire communication superstructure works to amplify the delivery. I would love to hear from you on, you know, on the HDFC journey in particular, how that transition has happened or not happened. As no, as uh, I think uh, Ravi just mentioned, you know, you can't just uh, live on the past glory. Uh, every experience uh, adds or eats into the brand. Uh, we were fortunate that we were the first mover and uh, we behaved as if we were not a monopoly, though we were a monopoly. And that helped us to build a brand which basically was solid, trustworthy, and uh, people still uh, vouch for it. The only thing is um, uh, these days, you know, the, the noise level is so much that uh, uh, you need to be also part of it to an extent, but you can't move away from the basic belief that you need to deliver the trust uh, or you need to meet up with the trust which people, uh, uh, you know, think about you the way people think about you. Because if you take, we, are, we, we basically provide housing finance. That is possibly the single largest investment and in any individual at any level makes in his lifetime. And for that, uh, the fear of going wrong uh, and in uh, the environment which we are in, where we deal with developers on one side, uh, you know how things can go wrong and they can uh, lose the lifetime savings. That's why, why HDFC has survived and thrived is only because what we have done in the last 30 years. So if you say that, you know, uh, in fact, what is driving us is the brand. Even today, what is driving us in the, is the brand. It is not the pricing. You know, financial products, you can easily get market share by pricing it the way you want. And because most of the products are like a commodity. What 
differentiates is the service. What differentiates is how you treat the customer, whether you are available. If I can give you about just a small example about the current pandemic, you know, when, when people want to convert their loans uh, to a lower rate and all, they need to physically come to the office, sign some promissory notes and all those things. And the way the IT and the legal department came into and provided that online, it may not have provided additional or new business to us, but it has definitely enhanced the brand for each year. So yes, the experience counts, but it's also being based on the past uh, that what we what we have done so far in the last three four decades. No, absolutely. So trust and credibility is pretty much often the foundation for experiences, right? And that's yeah. something yeah. that. I'd love to hear from Gunjan first and then Ravinder on this matter. So Gunjan, especially because, you know, you are in the experience, uh, you know, incubation business at large, I think. So. Thanks, Ravadi. I, so uh, at least as far as our live events division goes, and we're doing a lot of those events now online, um, experience is honestly all encompassing. A brand is nothing but what other people think you are and uh, brands have multiple opportunities to fix that notion of what that brand stands for. And that is literally every time a brand uh, comes across a customer and a customer is able to form that opinion. So for us, of course, with live events, you have that sensorial experience. You're in a visceral environment. You're experiencing that. But now with everything moving online, we have as many more opportunities, but they're just more distributed which is why it becomes more important to make sure that every time there is a touch point, we dial up that brand. Given the fragmented media landscape, it becomes even more important for brands to make sure that they're staying true to that one promise that they started out with. Oh, fantastic, absolutely. I think that's so true because you, know, you have to be consistent and inspirational at the same time. And that's really a creative challenge, which I think Ravinder faces also on a daily basis, Ravinder. Yeah, so, so we have a study which uh, sort of suggests that uh, if 76% of the world's brands disappeared, people will not even notice. So, and 24% in that sense are really the brands, where it comes the question of brand loyalty. Uh, if you're replaceable for whatever reason or lack of one, then you're not a brand. I mean, in that sense, you have to be consistent starting from when I walk into Apple store, what I feel is what I feel when I touch my phone, when I see their ads, or when I hear a Mogo uh, that Rajiv would probably create. So that consistency speaks one language. A brand is like a person. So I am the same person across. Otherwise, I feel cheated that you showed me this. And then this is what you turned out to be. I mean, the famous example is uh, surprisingly SBI. Uh, while the TV commercial was surprisingly SBI saying that you'll be delighted to uh, you know, see so many. I mean, we are so much. We, we have so many branches, blah, blah, blah. When you went to the bank, you were surprised in the wrong way. And that's where, you know, like we say, good advertising kills a bad product very fast. So that's what happened. Okay. Uh, as for the experience in uh, this entire thing, I mean, we are today living, a brand is living in so many spaces that for a marketer to keep it consistent, uh, probably that's what Mahesh was saying, is what, you know, uh, really, really important. And that's why you have to drive that consistency across whatever you say. And uh, I mean, I see this every day and I think uh, Pooja also will, uh, will uh, sort of agree with me is that in the morning one hashtag is born and everybody jumps on it, whether you belong there or not, it's not your conversation, but you just jump on it. I mean, that's counterproductive to a brand. It's not your conversation, stay out of it. But people just want likes and hashtags. So those are the mistakes that brands and marketers are making. Uh, you need to be yourself. I mean, there are two things. First is that whatever medium you are on, you have to be true to the medium. But secondly, and more importantly, you have to be yourself still. You can't just go and dance in somebody else's wedding. I mean, it's not yours. <laughs> so that's when you'll be called out. And people will say, what are you doing here? And I didn't expect this from you. Pretty much like a person, you know. So, so that's my point. I, you know, just to add to that, uh, Ravina, you know, there's this big, this famous saying in our office, and we tell this to a lot of our clients, every moment is not a moment to market, especially for you. And you cannot causevitize everything. Um, you know, some of the bigger, uh, the ads that the marketing community has patted their backs on saying that, oh my God, this is so beautifully... Uh, executed on this particular moment. If you go down and talk to consumers and, and you know, like that we said, we have this study where we speak with Gen Z consumers, uh, you know, every three months, uh, the biggest ads that we've been excited about, they look at it and say, that's so unauthentic. That was absolutely misrepresented. That's not at all how my life is. And um, being able to understand that is so important today. 
because that's the only way uh, you know you'd be able to get some sort of you know be truthful in yeah. a sense yeah no i think that's absolutely i think critical you know which uh, which party do you, are you a part of you can't be a part of every party um, and here i actually want to uh, open the house to one more uh, age old uh, a connection that branding has with another large subject which is culture which is content in bollywood uh, i think uh, advertising and branding all over the all over the world and especially india has a very symbiotic relationship with pop culture with uh, creative content and with uh, audiovisual content and so on and so forth mm-hmm. and in the last year last few years we are seeing the netflix revolution in one such cliche the enormous amount of ott content that's really coming out um, which actually is shaping our thinking shaping our entertainment so i just want to ask uh, you guys in terms of you know where exactly do you think is uh, you know this this uh, the state of content and the state of branding how are they to uh, engage in this point of time so open i'll take that um so with the way ott uh, platforms are sort of becoming ubiquitous in all our lives and especially in the way we consume media they have to uh, eventually become um, vehicles for brands to be able to carry messages as well uh, for both um, the platforms as well because there's only so so deep that their pockets run in terms of being able to uh fund content continuously so i know a lot of these platforms are in conversations to start avod teams and they will be starting to look at advertising very seriously as a form of revenue um and for brands if this is the one way or the most dominant way for any of us to receive messages then this is going to become that one place where brands need to win and i'll just take an example of my nephew who i'm spending time with in dubai we're watching this show together called the great outdoors it is set in a media house it's a publication that actually uh, runs a magazine called the great outdoors sorry the show is called the great indoors and the joke is that because they don't have enough money coming in right now most of their journalists are required to sit inside the office um look up articles on popular outdoor destinations and publish the magazine on the basis of secondary research um and all of these guys are using microsoft surface computers and my nephew who is 8 years old promptly turns around and says hey boy they also work in a media company why do you use an apple product why do they use microsoft surface does a microsoft surface does do the same job that you know your apple laptop does and to me that is classic clutter free breakthrough messaging right because they were able to communicate to an age role that hey you can use our laptops or our devices to do what you're doing as well and that that made a difference to him uh he obviously doesn't understand advertising he's born and raised on youtube and ott consumption he he sees 30 second ad spots as short stories so he sees them go start and stop and he's like oh that was interesting and he's he's not picked up the product message at all because for him it's just somebody selling him a short story so yes otts are going to be the way for brands to look at communicating with wider audiences going forward but it will have to be done in a way that makes sense to the end consumer it cannot be in your face it has to be more subtly placed it has to be the kind of messaging that consumers are open to absolutely i think i have uh, a, have a uh, you know another additional view to that is that with the this explosion of content and ott you know content does either prescribe culture or describe it right it's it's one of the two and um, today it's more than the advertising part of it content plays has a very it has has to be very responsible uh with what we put out and this community um and brands as well as creators have to be far more responsible with the content we put up because you know then brand messaging becomes that's that is the easy part but what are you communicating how are you communicating it and does it have a positive impact on society is going to be so important today with the explosion of otts and the kind of content vehicles that are available and if you actually make a positive impact in society your brand will eventually win and that is important to understand um and it's and we all got to look at it very very carefully because we would i would not let a creative go out from our office if it doesn't represent 
you know, a community well, if it doesn't represent a moment well, if it does not represent a situation well. Um, and that responsibility is important. And it's fantastic because, you know, I think today, I think that onus is so much more, as you said, the responsibility because you're being seen as influencers of actions. That's, again, something which uh, always was. But Raji might be curious to know from you, you know, this whole relationship between, see how Bollywood was once upon a time, 10 movies in a year. Today, Netflix is 10 new shows in a day. I mean, the OTT platforms. So there's a deluge of credible, well-produced content that's coming. How is that really, uh, you know, kind of interacting to the larger branding process? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I think brands need to be more creative of how they're going to integrate with that content or create their own content, right? So it's not just about the good old product placement. You know, in a Bollywood film, I managed to put my product in 27 times in, in various parts of the plot. It's not just about that. You know, what we are really exploring is the, this whole concept of the invisible brand. Right? So how can the, the brand be felt but, uh, and maybe heard, but not necessarily seen? Right, of course, from, that's from our context of, of sound. And uh, it offers many exciting possibilities because with uh, sonic identity, uh, subliminal branding, uh, you know, shades of sound through the content, creating sonic titles. So for example, every Netflix show is uh, uh, a serial is a brand, right? So that, that should have its, its own sound and its own sonic feel. So these, these are various things that we're exploring. Now, uh, Ma MasterCard, some of the work uh, we've done and some of the recommendations we've made to them uh, is, is the whole uh, uh, question of creating a culture, right? So it's not just about communication, but it's how, how do you immerse yourself in the culture? How do you create cultural emotion? And uh, what they have embarked upon is really very interesting. So they've actually gone to uh, Lady Gaga's producer and uh, commissioned him to find 20 young artists across the world uh, and get them to compose music. But the entire thing is built, the com compositions are built around the Mogo. So, the, ta -ra 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 -ta, for example, is the Mogo, that's given, and the composition so that it doesn't sound dissonant, but again, very subtle. The, the, the Mogo just, just appears like a wisp as a refrain once in a way, but the composition, there's one called Merry-Go-Round, which is already a, you're hitting the top of the charts, is a very beautiful composition, right? So this is how they're creating content out there it's getting onto playing, you know, streaming lists on Spotify, etc. But very subtly watermarked or sound marked with, with the MasterCard Mogo, you know. So, uh, for example, we've had uh, some conversations going on with brands who are in the alcohol space. Who, uh, again, obviously cannot put their visual branding there, right? So how do we build their sonic branding subtly into the content that they are creating, etc. So I think... Brands, again, it all comes down to uh, not going out there and saying, hey, me, et cetera, being more subtle, understanding the environment. And as Pooja said, the whole you know, social connection, being well-meaning, et cetera, that's, that's really important in these times. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, just want to kind of you know, move on now, taking this thread forward. You mentioned culture. That's a fantastic observation and point and taking that forward. To some of the advertising and, and brand communication we are seeing at this day and age, and then since it's today's, uh, one assumes it's you know theoretically new age to some extent. Uh, look at the work and what Deepak mentioned earlier in the piece in terms of cred, in terms of uh, Swiki, in terms of Dream Eleven IPL. And that's the Super Bowl of uh, uh, you know our world, and that's the state of art of Indian uh, you know communication in many ways. At least the, the big ticket ones. Um, but actually, I would actually like to now, you know, ask each of you to know perspective, uh, your point of view, because there's so much of controversy. Celebrities are being uh, kind of shown in a slightly controversial light. Uh, you're breaking conventions in terms of the way uh, certain applications are, are being made. Uh, to talk about some of the communication that you guys are seeing, uh, liking, what do you think is conforming to New York's New Age branding? Uh, what do you think is not? And where are people missing a trick? Uh, 
I'll go first about yeah. the two and Deepak mentioned it. So <laughs> one is the uh, cred campaign, obviously, and uh, uh, the way it sort of came at you and you you didn't sort of expect it to end like that. Uh, I think it's brilliant. It's very well done, and it is again creativity that has worked for them. I think there's some six, seven times downloads that they've got after this campaign. And Sorry, which one is that, Ravi? The cred, cred campaign where they are Bappilari singing a song, but then there's a techie sitting who's saying, "Can't do this." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and consumers understand. I mean, we all know this. Consumers are constantly seeing these boring things, so you have to have first of all uh, catch attention. Okay, and so so it mocks a celebrity. I think. Uh, I think it uses the celebrity. It doesn't mock them. Uh, I mean, it is using a context and is saying that, okay, you guys are passe now and I have only so much money. There's so many sub, sub layers to it. Okay. So I, I love that campaign and it, it's it's done uh, what it's supposed to do. Other one is the Dream 11 one, which I again love, you know, again, the, the, I mean, players are being treated badly or whatever, but I think every player at heart is a gully, gully cricketer as well. So we've shown, I mean, people, whoever has done that campaign has shown them in that light. And uh, it, it is a breakthrough campaign because we've seen IPL campaigns. I've done some myself. Where you get like, a, you know, half a day in a hotel room and they just read it out and they can't really act. So using a cricketer as a cricketer is a great idea to my mind. And using them with those nuances uh, of the street cricket and then saying, yeah, sab same hai, yeah, apna game hai, is, is a great uh, invitation to people to come check out uh, Dream 11. So I think these two are absolutely, uh, for me, uh, they, they are examples of good work uh, rather than bad. Okay, or 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 wrong in any sense, right? So so that's that's. I would have to entirely agree yeah. that both those campaigns were fantastic, and they were also so authentic. They took um, you know passe uh, influencers in a sense. You have to give the props to the influencers as well. Uh, you know that, that they agreed to do that. That's so it's great thinking, great writing, great talent and a combination of, of really breakthrough creativity. And even for Dream 11, they demo, again, demo, democratized it, right? That it is not just for few people. Yeah. Yeah. So it's whoever you may be, it does not matter. And it just, it's so inviting as, um, you know, as an application, it totally did its job. I loved it. I have to agree with Ravi. Yeah. Kulchan, your views? I was actually hoping it wouldn't come to me because I have a professional conflict here. Considering no, no, so rest forget, forget about uh, these two, talk of anything else, which I think conforms to. Yeah. No, no, but that's, that's okay, actually. Uh, so we repped the talents that worked on the cred ads uh, in terms of writing as well as uh, putting the scripts together. And um, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that they're being appreciated on this forum because we've obviously heard different opinions elsewhere uh, but you know this is really what new age creativity is it gives it puts the hands in the eye in it puts the power in the hands of people who have the ideas and that's really what happened uh, we have really strong writers who were able to marry the, those ideas with people who are willing to laugh at themselves and say hey i'm in on this joke i know how advertising has treated us as demigods in the past but hey guess what this is the new leveler. And that really comes from the current landscape that we live in that, hey, we're all equal on a social media platform. We're all equal when it comes to playing a game together on Dream 11. We're all equal when it comes to picking the players that represent our teams on a fantasy uh, sport platform. And that's really what these ads did. Um, so I'm really happy to, that our teams actually got the opportunity to work on this. One, it's a good, good campaign. Congratulations on that. Yeah, so you know, I think uh, that the the sense of irreverence that these these brands have is 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 charming. Right? It is. And, yeah. It, so it goes back to 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 what I was saying that uh, they're not taking themselves seriously. So the the consumer saying, "Hey, cool, yeah, okay, okay, I understand. You also have the same you know flaws as me, kind of." Uh, so so that's that's great, I think. But just going to a, a larger context uh, of, like you spoke of the, the state of creativity, right? Uh, I mean, we come from an era where, where we've seen some of the best, best advertising. I mean, <clears throat> people used to put on the television to, to watch the advertising, right? It, meaning you'd, you'd probably go to get your cup of coffee while the match is going on, <laughs> come, come back in time for the ads. Yeah. Because look at, look at all those, I mean, just, you know, nothing official about it. 
uh, the, the entire zuzus when they sort of launched on screen the vodafone pug you know i mean we've been in a great era of advertising so uh, honestly at a larger context there is no comparison there is no comparison to the quality sheer quality that we had yes like these two examples there are really good examples but if you're looking at the larger context of quality but having said that there's obviously a lot of talent in agencies right because that that is where all the the creative minds who are constantly thinking creativity are there it's just a question of as ravi said repositioning them repurposing them expanding their world view and not just the film begins in prague in a beautiful town square <laughs> you know sort of get get out of that and uh, <laughs> so, so that's what i want to really speak about rajiv uh, and uh, so the choice at that time was tv i mean when i when i got uh, into advertising i was writing a lot of print and radio yeah then print became message only and radio also became message only and tv was the new frontier and so you used to write great scripts i mean even when we were together at mudra it was about the tv script but then there is a, a glitch and then there is a oml and so what is happening is that the the platforms are multiplied and the number of creative people is spread thin in a way in that sense uh, and and so so this is the reality of today i mean you 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 will today if you if if i go out i will probably find people who are more digitally savvy than great at craft or you know script writing exactly and and which is also reflecting in a way in the kind of uh, advertising that we are seeing on tv but there's another aspect to it that i know that my tv is my most expensive medium hence i have to be formal like i have to do my link test i have to do my focus group be very safe wherever i'm putting the biggest chunk of money and so what i tell my clients is that do that but experiment everywhere else wherever you can afford it right so so that's how the game has changed it's not that uh, i mean standards have come down in any way it's it's like the mainstream bollywood is making the bang 3 but there is a parallel cinema which is which we've seen the rise of i mean the aishman khurana's world uh, you know the kind of film that we've seen uh, that's pretty much how it is happening everywhere i mean netflix is the death of universal is the death of uh, universal studios because here is uh, another platform which is giving the opportunity to make that film which otherwise would never get made so again democratization like puja was saying so it it's going to go on in this it's it's like entropy it's going to expand yeah exciting time absolutely and i think i think there's one uh, one case i want to actually request all of your viewers that that swiggy see swiggy is advertising a lot right now on ipl and i think swiggy is an interesting case because that's where creativity plus data because obviously people have analyzed who orders when and what is the kind of volumes of orders and so on and so forth uh, and technology being the you know the the, the fundamental kind of uh, you know conduit for delivery uh, is coming together and that's again a, to me it's like an interesting uh, specimen of this new age and which is not pure promise which is not pure delivery it's not 30 minutes of free neither is it pure promise it's somewhere which is a convergence and the second part there which again i would request uh, and you know uh, people like puja you're working live on it at ravindra project is like is the whole uh, story of dialogue versus monologue i think the advertising culture we grew up with initially was pretty much a partisanship culture a piece of advertising which you responded to reacted to uh, and you were expected to act in a slightly officious uh, fashion so just your views on swiggy uh, and i would request mahesh to you know a kind of you know pick this off uh, how the convergence of the three and dialogue versus monologue uh, any other uh, such uh, thoughts that come to your head thank you shivaji you know uh, listening to all the co panelists I and mean, i I'm, i'm just being open to another world almost because you know i have been away from advertising for the last decade but uh, instead of uh, responding to exactly what 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 Uh, you asked for you know do you think the the especially the agencies you no know, i uh, i'm slightly moving away from this uh during the uh, in the initial stages when uh, public relations came into say this is about almost three decades ago the large pr agencies would basically uh, large uh, ad agencies would basically offer their clients a composite this thing by having a division of pr within the large agency and what they did not realize is there is a different mindset required for a pr work and for advertising work because advertising worked on money power while pr worked on relationship power and so is similarly now with 
so much of new age advertising uh, is the large agency the traditional agency we uh, trying to um, have divisions within them or they are trying to coexist with the boutique agencies how does it work because in, for me it's a learning so it's it's, it's a question rather than a, 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 a anything else who wants to answer that open to house ravi is probably in the best position as in being <laughs> being in it okay Uh, so all kinds of things are happening, Mahesh. Uh, uh, we, as an organization, are trying to build what we call a village, where there is a traditional creative agency, which is us. Then there is a Havas Media, which is right right in the same building. Then we have Game Loft, which is called the gaming. Then we have Universal Music, which is about the music. Uh, we have a event agency called Showbiz. We have a, a Think Design, which does UI UX for you guys. Also, I think HDFC is one of the biggest clients. And then we also have Langur, which does uh, data and analytics based work. so so we are trying to offer a bouquet of everything so and it is not like you uh, if you are on board we'll do everything whatever works for you so we combine things and we offer that and i think it's great for brands because i've seen this in the last two years a uh, lot of clients who who've been working with a digital agency separately and a mainstream agency separately i kind of saying we want to pull this back into you i mean this is as recent as two days ago we won a business and they said how about the digital mandate also coming to you uh, so so there is that sort of integration coming back uh, i don't think the marriage of uh, the what happened about 20 years back when media agencies separated from the traditional creative agencies has done anything for the brands it may have worked well for media guys who who said this is my bargain money and so i must get it separately yeah. uh, it might have worked for them but it didn't definitely not work for brands i mean that's my opinion at least so so i think it serves well like we were saying earlier a brand needs to be consistent so so the more uh, smaller and coherent a team is the better it is for the brand uh, and so the world is constantly changing right now i mean there is an accenture who's also kind of just saying i'll do this and that and i bought droga interesting times but i think uh, you're there and you can make your choices uh, but i i would uh, uh, if i was a, a marketing guy i would think trust one uh, sort of a group yeah. and then do everything with them yeah um uh, i think the you know especially for people like us who've who've actually been the small agency um and been those guys who took you know share of business from a lot of the bigger guys and then grew into what we did today and then be part of a dub, of big be part of wpp and you know you suddenly reach that phase and you're like oh my god am i that agile and am i that authentic as i used to be when i was uh, when i was small and the one big lesson that we have learned and we are true to that is that we have to be completely secure as creative people the moment we put the brand at the center where that we as an agency will bring you if it's not just i will bring an oml i will bring a vice i will bring all of them to the table to what works for my brand and we're not we we we're working in a way in a, from a space of security and that makes the brand love you more and that's why you have long term relationships um i do think it's not just about bringing everything in house and with respect i say that it's not about bringing everything in house but uh you know holding an important seat on the table with with the cmo and with 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 people like you mahesh and and showing you that i may not have the ability to do everything but i truly understand your brand but i will bring the best people to the table and the people who say that to you are the people um, i think you should trust yeah actually yeah if i if i may add i totally agree with that because uh, we are, we are i mean uh, very small right so uh, we have about what 10 people or 15 people so we build, but we built an ecosystem right <laughs> and uh, that's exactly the model we are following and hope to follow for a long time because uh, we've been resisting that that whole scaling up and getting getting into quarterly reports and that kind of stuff so but uh, yeah so i think that's great and uh, i'm sure gunjan puja and ravi you're going to hear from me very soon <laughs> i think you know that money uh, with this and we've learned this over the last few years as we reach some sort of scale the big fear was are we giving away a part of our revenue and uh, you know initially that's what we were thinking oh my god if i give this to oml then i'm giving a part of the revenue but right. what happened is is that the client looked at us and said these guys are not going to just sell me their product 
Yeah. So I want them. Yeah. I will give them that big retainer because I trust these folk to get the right solution to the table. So in fact, the money doubled. And that was Finally, such a yeah. great revelation for us. Because today, OML is one of our biggest partners and so is Vice and so is, you know, every other, you know, and I'm sure as will Rajiv be in the future. So that, that that's totally helping. It's great for the bottom line. If I can give the HDFC example, if you see HDFC, uh, all these companies, HDFC Bank, Life, HDFC Mutual Fund, Elbo, we started them as separate companies. You know, if you see other models in India, the other financial services group, they are they are with divisions within the same thing, and you can see the the success uh, of HDFC and the others on a comparative basis. And the reason we always felt from the beginning that each of these areas are very specialized areas. Though these are financial services, they are still very specialized. An insurance, a banker, a housing loan product. And that's why each of these are companies are masters and leaders in their own, own sphere. And the reason I ask that question is, you know, these days, the youngsters, especially the talented individuals, they don't, they no longer want to be dream part of a, you know, a big company. They want to live their own dreams. You know, they come with a background that they would want to take risks. They are more of entrepreneurial type. And then to work with big corporates, they need to live through their hierarchy as well. So sometimes, uh, you know, uh, that's the reason I said, is it better to use specialized agencies or boutiques uh, uh, for certain kind of, that was, that was the reason, reason for that question. No, sure. I think uh, I think just to add one thing from my personal experience. So I'm a, as I call myself, a non-state actor but now again uh, in the strategy business, right? Which which is historically aligned to the creative product. I mean, you would expect strategy to be part of your creative agency, digital agency. From my experience, I found two quick things. One is that there is increasingly an appetite for specialized service providers. Um, and something which Pooja also mentioned in terms of, you know, from the perspective of wanting to get the best of every individual uh, yeah. domain. Secondly, uh, when we talk of new age branding, we have to talk also of new age branding structures in the client organization. From my experience today, client organizations have invested in the people and the skill to integrate those functions in-house. Integrate as in, as an as a operational integration, as opposed to outsource the integration function also to an agency. So I think that uh, level of uh, uh, those two developments, I think, are significant. And I think while one model is the uh, Uber integrated model, the other model is exactly the bang opposite, where you have uh, uh, super specialists uh, coming in and uh, the integration is done at the client level. Yeah. So, so just, just to cap that, I think uh, uh, you have all kinds of choices and uh, you yeah. as a brand are at a certain stage, what you, the choice is yours. There's yeah. all kinds of things available. And as in that sense, you as a brand have to be uh, making smarter choices, <laughs> smarter yeah. choices that work for you. So, sure. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, uh, Rajiv, please. Yeah. Just, uh, I think you you spoke about the the structural change, right? Yes. Yes. I, I think that's all, especially in you know established uh, sort of companies. Uh, very often, we the earlier generation always came from a very left-brained kind of approach, right? Uh, so, for example, when we were young, if you were not good at maths, you were a duffer, absolute duffer, right? So, but uh, today's younger generation is actually they're coming in from a very right-brained, emotional, passionate kind of uh, approach. So, that's where I think the, the sort of clash is happening. And uh, I, companies should recognize that, that, that it's, it's okay for, to wear jeans or it's okay to suddenly say whoo at work, <laughs> right, or something. So it's just that slightly different kind of vibe. I think that that so it's structural change is also in, important in, inside. Very, too. very interesting. Yeah. Uh, just one more second, I'll take care. One of my clients recently asked me that I want you to depute a person in our office who will be. Uh, I want to give him the definition uh, or a designation called creative champion. He will be our guy. And he will be sitting outside, uh, I mean, out of our office, and he will just look at the creative quality of the product. So that, 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 that uh, is the point. Yeah. And what Shivaji said, clients are reinventing themselves as well to understand and you know grapple with this. So new... Maybe have an incubation uh, room where only 22-year-olds uh, hired and kept, <laughs> kept <in. laughs> And they're not exposed to anybody else, but told to think about the company's problems. <laughs> you know, we actually have 
fifteen percent of our organization, uh, the way we're structured, fifteen percent of our company has to always be below the age of like twenty two. And that team, and because I have a nineteen year old mentor, by the way, so that I can constantly stay yeah. up to speed. um and that helps and i think it's been a great it's it's really worked wonders for us as we've scaled and as we've grown up as people and are no longer the youngest people in the room you know so that's really helped us tremendous yeah no oh, that's tremendous that's a, that's a very welcome new age branding is not just the strategy but the implementation and staffing and so on but i would actually as we get closer to the um, you know towards uh, kind of summing up uh, this whole story of dialogues which i mentioned at the little bit time back and that uh, that's one clear seminal shift you know from old age for timeless branding the piece of the print advertisement is pretty much like a brick and mortar institution which subsequently has become uh, conversations with customer and i think each one of uh, us in this panel have uh, have been a part of this transition or perhaps lived only in this new uh, era as well i would love to hear it. and i mentioned swiggy for one reason because it is a dialogue right because it's about technology and it's about data which leads to communication which leads to service delivery but that's just an example i would love to hear from you your views on how this uh, dialogue uh, mindset uh, is going to influence new age branding going forward and what would be some examples you may have in mind as well should if i could go i can talk about what we do for netflix on an everyday basis um our big strategy is and you know it's out there we're the biggest fans of content and as the biggest fans of content we are having dialogues with our community on an everyday basis so let's take an example of i don't know if you guys saw what we did with radhika apte some time ago uh, radhika was in almost every netflix uh, film and you know there was another announcement that she's going to come out in another film and the whole conversation on you know on all our social profiles is guys what is happening does netflix only have radhika apte and uh, we took exactly that and started having a conversation with the community and created a a piece of creative which was called radflix instead of netflix we made the joke on ourselves and we put radhika in every position that goes into the film into the filmmaking process so she was a director she was the actor she was everything now that dialogue that conversation created so much that even today if radhika apte comes in uh, in anything the first piece that comes out is radflix and netflix right just that constant dialogue um keeps things going we do that on an everyday basis on our social profiles for netflix very important that's this not just the future that is what we need to do today to be that's able right. to be relevant gojan ravinder uh, rajiv please shoot sure so um just building off of what pooja mentioned there's obviously the whole aspect of social listening that allows uh brands to shape the dialogue but there's also i think what we were mentioning earlier which is the structures which allow it to happen and those experiences at least for swiggy because it's delivered over a technology platform that's where the dialogues are happening but we've sort of seen this across the board so um right now we're working with um we're working on content marketing mandates for companies around the world and we've actually placed teams in their offices in Russia and Poland and Thailand so that they're in touch with the local culture and they're able to converse with not just the brand teams but also understand who the customer is and to be able to do that well so I'll I'll actually take an example of how that translated for hdfc if i might may uh, yeah. we actually worked on an hdfc live um event and this was obviously pre pandemic times where it was okay to be out and be with other people yeah. um it's an opportunity to actually uh, overcome the loss of someone special to you and we actually set up the event as a moment of catharsis and you went through all the stages of loss and that itself just got so much conversation so it's not just about what the brand is putting out there but what the person who's experiencing it feels and is able to go through all those stages along with that brand that's then the facilitator of those experiences and those emotions and i think that's where really it comes in so it's so like pooja was mentioning if it's radflix then it's like hey i relate with that and i feel like i'm in this journey along with you or if it was hdfc life on ground it's like hey you're with me in this journey of overcoming this terrible loss or if it's you know if it's a conversation online that maybe um harps on nostalgia and that's what rajiv sort of you know uh 
made us experience in the beginning of this conversation. It's anything that allows people to relate to a conversation. And then obviously, given the fact that, um, you know, technology is allowing us to uh, respond, that's what initiates the dialogue. So that's what you want. And just understanding how these platforms are built, they are built to incentivize engagement because that's what keeps people on those platforms. So that's what ends up making those pieces more trending. So if I, if I may add to that, you know, it's, I think, a fundamental behavior shift that has to happen. So brands, uh, when, when you, you know, close your eyes and think of yourself as a brand, uh, what, what do you do on social media, right? On a day-to-day -day basis, you check Facebook, you post to a friend, you evoke some dialogue there, you, you post something else on Instagram, you're evoking dialogue again. Now, a small example, yesterday, was John Lynn's birthday, right? 80th birthday. And uh, about three months ago, I had created uh, my version of Imagine, which is uh, like a jazz version for the International Jazz Day. And uh, I was tempted to put it out, right? But then I said, man, everybody's doing it. Right? <laughs> Everybody is putting their own version of Imagine. So I said, no, no, forget it. I, you know, I'll do it. So but now this is me behaving as a brand, right? Of what yeah. I want to put out. So therefore, it's not just about being seen and being heard, but it's about putting out something meaningful that will evoke dialogue, that will evoke a conversation. And I think, I think that's, that's important. It, so it's not saying I am a brand and therefore I have got to spend and I will spend regardless of the context, the situation. But it's about being yeah, just like a human being, really. Now you can add to this, you know, this the entire pandemic, everybody was trying to create videos on Corona warriors and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And I remember when we, when we had this 2005 deluge in Mumbai, uh, that time we had created a film about uh, uh, the entire, you know, there was a very emotional film done. Now, but we thought so much, you know, we, we spent some time, we said, that, you know, with the do it, not do it. But today it's instant. Is it because it's not very expensive? Is it because the technology allows you to do it so fast? Is it just because you ha want to be visible just for the sake of being visible? So, I think a bit of everything. So, so one is uh, about this dialogue thing. I mean, today it's easy. Uh, and, and there's also the, the question of what sort of a brand you are. Uh, I'll go back to, uh, this happened about 30 or 40 years ago when Coca-Cola bottle was changed and uh, the conversation on the street when there was no social media was, why did you change my Coke? That's, that's what a brand is. So it's, so it's owned by people and saying, it's my Coke, why have you changed it? So that's what a powerful brand is. Uh, now, it's, it's, it's quite all right and quite, it's quite fun and it's, it's brand building in, in the form that Pooja and uh, Gunjan are speaking about. But what happens when a Coca-Cola stature brand like Maggie in India goes through a crisis. That's also a dialogue which is not being a reply on a social media platform. It's you have to make a large statement on TV, you know, and I was at McCann at that time and that crisis was handled. So uh, dialogue is important, absolutely, because your brand is a brand if people own it. If you own it, then it's not a brand. Then it's a monologue, right? So, so that's the one thing that I want to do. I think that's uh, that's critical. I think the dialogue story, and in fact, uh, you know, adding to creativity, data, and technology, the fourth thing that comes up beautifully in this conversation, two things. One is democracy, democratization. The other is dialogue. I think these five things. If you look at creativity, it is with data. Uh, it is driven by data, delivered by technology. Uh, you know, uh, leading to dialogues uh, and uh, including one and all, which is democratization. And that's again some of the stuff that new age branding is. Uh, really uh, doing in an interesting way. Uh, and I think we've had a you know, fabulous set of observations today. We've discussed uh, brands' experiences. Uh, we've discussed advertising and the state of art that it is today and you know how uh, the power of creativity still has to shine bright uh, with all the necessary aids and pillars that are available today thanks to technology. Uh, we discussed also in terms of structure. So branding uh, new age branding is not just for strategy, but about structures and orientation and so on, so forth. Uh, uh, we discussed as to how this whole dialogue uh, narrative, you know, which is really, it's not a one-way street anymore. It's about how uh, people are talking to each other and uh, the response the customer gives is not just uh, sales, but it's actually a, 
uh, it's actually a brand conversation. Uh, and also, I think we've agreed that it requires a whole lot of uh, security. I heard the word revenue security. I think it's more also of uh, professional security that comes in. And, and I think, uh, two, in, in my view, it's really about two models. One is full integration and the other is full disintegration. To me, there's really no third model that is uh, going to work. And, and a lot of the decision making will depend on the client structures and the comfort levels uh, that go with it. Uh, and I think we've had a fascinating perspective uh, from one and all on this. And uh, I think the roadway or the express way to new age branding is live and clear. And I think uh, as ever, the uh, story is uh, implementation, implementation, implementation. And I think I would now like to hand it over to Deepak. I think I'm it's kind of over on time. And uh, see how, how well uh, I, I think beautiful, beautiful conversation. And I think Bonvita can take some uh, uh, message out of this. That if you have a conversation with Bonvita, <laughs> then it's always going to be very engaging and insightful. So, uh, uh, I think very interesting. Thank you, folks. I think uh, great insight. Thank and you. I can only say that um, you know the future belongs to the imaginative and. Uh, and you know who could be more imaginative than the creative folks? So yeah, so you guys are certainly uh, leading the way. Uh, the way that's an extraordinary gift that you all have. So that's outstanding. But you know, I may uh, disagree a bit with uh, Pooja, Gunjan, and uh, Ravi, especially <laughs> on kissing the donkey on the screen and uh, and 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 somebody coming and telling Dhoni that as uh, the cricketer kuch bhi bolega. I'm not sure that's really a creativity and uh, uh, to be on the screen, but uh, uh, so bit of my disagreement out there, guys. But uh, but uh, creativity is subjective and is a democracy. You need to accept. <laughs> uh, and uh, you need to, uh, include and uh, just like everything in life. <laughs> hey, and it broke through the clutter, right? It got everyone talking about it. This is a generation bias. Agree to disagree, I guess. Yeah. And but you know, um, uh, after every conversation, I usually pick up an essay. Listen, uh, let's bring the folks out of what you guys are doing on your daily life and look about something else. But you are a set of people who have actually made your Purpose as passion or passion as purpose, whatever you wish to call this. But uh, so your life is all around this and it's, it's something very, very envious and, and beautiful. But I still like to ask you, maybe I could ask it, Mahesh. Mahesh, you were a cricketer at one point of time, you know, in your early days. And you really speak about that. Yeah. Uh, love to hear a bit uh, on your cricketing days. And uh, uh, are you still lifting your bat and hitting some shots around now? Oh, the, I mean, I stopped playing cricket because the ball was hitting me more rather than the bag. So I, I decided to give it up. But uh, yes, I was a professional cricketer before I joined HCFC. And there were certain compulsions that I had to quit uh, uh, cricket because, you know, you had to take care of uh, a lot of other things as well. Having said that, you know, I uh, this, uh, this entire, since you raised this topic of cricket, Today's advertising is like the T20. You know, the bats, the the batsmen have shots which we have never seen. Very innovative. The bowlers bowl uh, uh, slow bounces which we have never seen, and the fielders take catches after it's almost a six. So you know, this type of innovations we are seeing in advertising as well, and uh, the. The pace of change is huge, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm lost actually in this entire conversation. I was almost lost, and I learned a lot of things. One aspect which uh, one of our colleagues may, on the panel mentioned is mentor has no age. So, no, you have a younger mentor to learn, it will be much better. And I'm taking this point back with me. Brilliant. Uh, but Mahesh, uh, hope to see you on a cricketing field. It is the CEO Cricket Challenge. So we'll have you probably the next time out there. Rajiv, there is, a, there is something which keeps intrigues me. Uh, you know, you look at uh, folks like Priyanka Chopra and, and Farhan Akhtar and now Alia Bhatt, everybody trying to come down and sing and become a rock star on the platforms. Uh, do you think, do, do they really have that singing talent or is it just that uh, rock star image that they're trying to build up on somewhere? Oh God, I think I'm going to get into trouble. <laughs> well, I'll, let's not mention the names, but uh, uh, there, is, there is a big joke about auto-tuning going on uh, in the industry with regard to certain stars who get on the stage. 
and uh, say boss once they out of the studio they expose so uh, I, i'm sure that somebody will create auto tuning for live stage but but <laughs> hey you know what it's a it's a free world i mean come on you 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 like to sing go out and sing there are guys who like to come and listen to you May, maybe not for your singing just to see you on stage it's cool i i think i i think that's fine it's each person's way of uh, you know expressing themselves in a different avatar like we all we all choose to right uh, i i like to maybe act talking about cricket uh, i come from a cricketing family my younger brother arjun raja actually played ranji for karnataka Oh, wow. And with uh, Rahul Dravid uh, scored 260, he scored 267. They had a 400 run partnership at Eden Garden. So I'm a crazy, crazy, crazy. cricketer, and uh, had to stop cricket because my back gave up, and that's how I discovered the flute. So you know, it's probably. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I guess it's cool. Yeah, everybody has different avatars, and yeah, let's keep it going. I mean, you had a point of view. I mean, you were nodding when I asked that. You know, so you want to share something? Yeah, so so I and Rajiv share this passion, and uh, so so uh, this is this is what I have in office. So uh, yeah, we play something. <laughs> go ahead, Ravi. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. So I think uh, we'll do that with Rajiv whenever we can. <laughs> I'll give you a background. Yeah, if if we do that. So uh, besides this, before this, I was also a cricketer, and I'm also played. I was also aspiring to sort of you know play for India. and i remember the day i gave up that dream uh, although i was i was in the last under 19 35 probables for indian stuff is the day when sachin hit three sixes of abdul qadir i said that slot is gone now so then i started <laughs> starting seriously <laughs> and then somewhere later music came so yeah three three of us shivaji himself is a great uh, cricket freak uh, deepak you sound like one so <laughs> so that i used to be i mean uh, in our times engineering ca doctor or You better uh, make it to the India team, yeah. Gunjan, you have built some great music festivals. You know, I mean, um, uh, uh, do you also have an interest in music? I mean, uh, now we all these interests are coming up. Maybe we could hear you. I mean, do you <laughs> play, sing? What do you do? So I've always sort of been behind the camera, sort of person, very, very shy uh, to draw any sort of attention to myself. But uh, very late in life, I I started ballet. when i was 32 and wow. uh this is something that i now share with my niece so we've we've actually been taking holidays together pre pandemic where so we spent some time in london where we learned we went and trained there for a week so we we do this together as you know niece and uh, aunt but yeah that's something that i try to do in my personal time you will never see any uh, pictures of this on social media this information is in floating out there for um for public consumption interesting that's 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 good we love to see that picture somewhere uh -uh. <laughs> well well puja uh, you mean a, a you mean a star yourself 40 under 40 and multiple recognitions otherwise so what's happening other than the advertising world in your life i mean what are your interest areas so i had a baby 3 years ago she's um her name is leia and uh, um i very late in life this is not serious but this is something that you you know what she and i and my husband are sort of working towards as she gets a little older is uh, is our love for animals and to see them free and not see them in zoos so she and i have this project that by the time she is about 6 years old we're going to start rescuing animals that are sitting in zoos so what we do every weekend is that we look at the famous zoos in the world and uh, you know start drawing out petitions on how we're going to let these animals go free so there was this one elephant from a zoo in karachi that is now finally after 30 years going to be in a jungle it was a big conversation in our home and that's really what i'm working towards financially for myself so that we're able to actually achieve that because that's going to require a lot but there's also a project for her because i want her to by the time she gets to college she actually has been able to make some real difference in the lives of these animals and been able to rescue that because i can see that that's her that she really wants to do that as she as she grows because she's so empathetic towards animals and um that's it's sort of a joint interest that she and i have right now great nice. that's amazing and and shivaji you are a great writer you know and and i think um, this is a fact which the entire world knows um so is it the writing is it the advertising or or is it a food critic what what is it that you really enjoy the most man all three in some order shivaji <laughs> <laughs> no no so actually actually i actually uh, 
totally adore writing. I mean, adore it myself and only myself, but not too many others do it. But I actually live to write. Um, I, I, it's really a very difficult hour in the day when I don't have five minutes to write something or the other. Um, and uh, that's really the one thing that uh, keeps me going. And uh, one day soon in the next uh, 25 years or so, I think I ought to be able to monetize it at some point. But uh, before that, um, I, I just think that, you know, whatever, uh, and my core insight of writing really is that uh, I think the more introverted you are as a person, uh, the more prolific you are as a writer. Because I think if you are, uh, uh, if you are privy to spontaneous uh, verbal expression, uh, then the motivation for writing and capturing your thoughts become less. And that's one uh, learning I can put on the table for sure. <laughs> And you know, it, it's not going to be fair if I don't ask each one of you the the best and the worst ad and not the ones that you have worked upon. I think it's going to be a great appreciation from the other creative folks who are listening to this conversation or will get a copy of this conversation later. So uh, uh, maybe Raji, we could start with you, you know, the best and the worst ad that you have encountered and something which you haven't worked upon. I mean, the best I can think of... <clears throat> I mean, there are so many, but one that really sticks in my mind uh, is the shot of a Volkswagen car and below it, it said lemon, right? And that's how they, they really launched <clears throat> the Volkswagen in America. Lemon means uh, a rejection uh, in auto parlance. It means not good enough. Uh, and for a a car to launch saying lemon and showing the product, what the copy went on to explain was that our engineers are so fastidious that there was a tiny scratch on the bottom of the left bumper and this was rejected from the production line and therefore it's a lemon, right? <clears throat> I mean, that was only one example, but I think that's probably the greatest, greatest campaign in my mind ever in the world, the entire Volkswagen uh, campaign done by Doyle, Dane, Bernbach. Interesting. Seen this campaign, but never thought about this line. This is, this is, this is a great, great one, Rajiv. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Shivaji, you, what about you? Yeah, so I think uh, my favorite uh, advertising is uh, very basic Indian, Kuch Khas I have Sabine, ne. Cadbury Dairy Milk, many, 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 many years and decades back. I think it just got everything right. Strategy, creative, emotion, retrofit, force fit. Uh, worst advertising, there are far too many, so I don't want to talk about exactly. it. It would be unfair to all the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> Mahesh, any ad that you like beyond HDFC? Uh, I'm a old school, so I, I really love the Hamara Bajaj ad, uh, the old one. And um, as, uh, you know, one ad which was discussed and which was praised a lot, and I don't want to, that I was not very happy with that uh, recent ad, so I would not want to criticize now because I've got the perspective on that ad. So, Uja? I have, um, this is something I talk about in many meetings. This is the Van Damme Volvo ad. I, I really want to see what the brief for that ad was, which is so fantastic because great <laughs> creativity comes from great briefs. Um, just absolutely silent, great music, just one thought of stability and so beautifully executed. So just love that. Any worst? Too many. And honestly, I don't even remember because uh, you, they just don't take space in your in your mind with all of that clutter. Okay, Jen, would, uh, sorry. Yeah, I, sorry, I just, Rajiv, go ahead, yeah. Uh, you said uh, great uh, uh, creativity come from great briefs. So Ravi and I will tell you a little secret. Sometimes great briefs come from great creativity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I want to actually know I what the brief, the brief for that was. We crack something and we go, make it fit now. <laughs> make it fit. <laughs> oh, gosh. Gunjan, how about you? Which one? So I don't really have one favorite, but there is a, there's a certain aspect that I've, I've noticed that I tend to like about different creatives. So it's just about smart placement and really knowing what you want to say. So, for example, uh, the Ritz Carlton put out um, an ad to uh, for hires, and it was very simple, saying "Ladies and gentlemen, looking to serve ladies and gentlemen." It so clearly defines what the brand stands for. Or, for example, I think there's something that HDFC did last uh, year during the Valley, where obviously during the time of influencer marketing, everybody is 
all influencers are talking about some of the other product it was really clever insert where in the series of stories the last story was whatever you're buying buy it on an hdfc card and you'll get 10% off so i think it's just about very clever placement and very clear messaging and that's really what uh, we're all here to do ravi yeah so so ads like everybody is saying there is there will be favorites and stuff i i would rather speak about uh, the kind of philosophy i like or the people i like and what they're doing and uh, so in that sense i think i absolutely look up to david droga the kind of stuff mm-hmm. that agency does droga 5 i mean mm-hmm. you can just i mean i i go to their website every once in a while to just educate myself the kind of stuff they've done from sheer craft last i saw was a film that they've made out of pictures and just text and here we are we say oh i do not budgets so they've defied every convention and done great work every single time i mean uh, they are they've often been the agency of the year at can several 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 times and i mean god only knows how much has accenture bought them for so so that's the agency and the thinking that i look up to uh, and uh, i mean starting from air force 1 uh, that uh, where it it sort of people thought that uh, air force 1 has been uh, vandalized it was actually a stunt pulled by them and so so that is the kind of thinking that is uh, that uh, can make brands fast can make you get noticed very fast and it there is no rules uh, that they have under armor is a brand that is challenging nike today i mean it's been done in the last 5 years so so that's that's what one person that i look at obviously wnk uh, there was one gentleman uh, who's sort of gone off grid now eric verbojan a uh, great creative director uh, the kind of work he did again he was in goa uh, when we used to have go office and he spoke about how you can do great work in spite of less budget instead of client saying i want to see a car in my commercial 80% of the time still a great commercial is possible so these two india obviously prasoon and piyush are i mean two people that i look up to piyush for the kind of simplicity and prasoon for the kind of the way he just makes everything work in the marketplace uh, so yeah interesting you know so but somehow to me uh, amul ads have always stuck you know there were the print ads and in a newspaper you will never miss them you want to spend time in seeing those ads and reading them i think they have they have a finest creativity that i have probably come across and they've continued on that they build a complete brand around this this has been an outstanding advertising from my perspective you know it is i think we were talking about brand placement earlier and i think amul is one of the first brands to have commissioned branded content so the film manthan which was made back in the 70s was a story about amul and they managed to get that off back then yeah. so yeah they definitely had that foresight sure and well before before i end the conversation i'm going to ask rajiv uh, which is the ipl team you betting on rajiv uh, who's lifting the cup this year yeah no i would like to see rrc win yeah. i mean but it's it's mumbai though looks like <laughs> but Mahesh. i want good old virat to win boss come on <laughs> I I don't think he, <laughs> something is off in the stars when it comes. Yeah, to yeah, it. something's off. I agree, but <laughs> <laughs> let's ask Mahesh. What do you? What does he think? Mahesh, I I think the Delhi is a good side this time. It's a very balanced side. But Mumbai and Delhi between Mumbai and Delhi. Gunjan, I'm sorry, I'm not following cricket at all. I think the only conversation I caught on was when people started tweeting at virat saying hey are you going to be able to perform since you've just had a baby just flipping the entire <laughs> uh, you know uh, women at men at work conversation that's the only one i got sorry will you ex- will, will you exchanging the balcony sites with sharuk khan gunjan you know uh, you know probably the next time you can actually ask him you know so. <laughs> puja i really don't care to be honest about the cricket but it, it's a great time for us as an agency thank god ipl has opened up again <laughs> but deepak i do i do hope uh, uh, csk comes back because that's the team i follow so let's yeah. let's shivaji has to be kkr there's no second option ah. <laughs> <laughs> why did we even ask right <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping like Ravi that uh, number seven lifts the cup for the one final time. So uh, I hope he does that. You know, well, uh, friends, it was an outstanding conversation. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, really, really enjoyed this. And uh, uh, to all the viewers, and uh, I'm going to see you all again next Saturday with another very interesting set of topic uh, with a new set of leaders. Till then, take good care of yourself and uh, uh, and stay healthy. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.